All right, thank you guys so much. It's a pleasure to be on this side of Los Angeles, a brand new place for me. Um, and I'm also really happy to have my colleague Amr Patel here, who's the Director of Giving Operations. So ideally, between the two of us, we're going to be able to answer any questions that you guys have about how Tom's works, how we're able to give, and how we get all of these shoes uh, everywhere they need to be around the country, and then also answer questions about uh, our other gives um, in the time that we have been allotted today. So let me start out by talking a little bit about the history of Tom's and how it came to be. In 2006, our founder, Blake Mykoski, was traveling in Argentina, and he saw a bunch of children who didn't have shoes. He looked down, he found that he had shoes, he thought that shoes were indeed a good thing, and he recognized that there were two approaches he might have been able to take. He could have gone about and asked people to donate shoes, which was the traditional approach that was taken, and he thought, you know what? there were potentially some sustainability issues with that approach. So rather, what seems to us now like um, no big deal, because he's been doing this since 2006, he said he was going to try something totally different. What he was going to do was say that with every pair of shoes that was purchased, he was going to give a pair of shoes to a child in need around the world. And so since 2006, we have been doing this through what is known uh, in a trademarked way as the one-for-one one model. Um, and we have since then expanded it to use this model in a couple different ways. So just to see uh, how we have changed since 2006, this is sort of what I like to call the evolution of Tom's giving. So um, the giving model in 2006, we weren't selling that many pairs of shoes. We were brand new. So um, we talked about them, we. In 2006, I was a doctoral student, so there wasn't actually a we. It was Blake uh, in a uh, loft apartment in Venice and a handful of his friends. Um, and what they were doing was talked about as shoe drops. So they sold a couple pairs of shoes, and then they gathered up some giving shoes, and they took them down to Argentina, and they took them over to South Africa. And on their own, they were able to give them out to children who they recognized were in need. We sell a lot more shoes now than we did in 2006, and that has not proved to be a sustainable model. So what we do now uh, is we work through what we call global giving partners. And I'll give you a handful of, of examples of what those giving partners are. But we have evolved from a company that sold 10,000 pairs of shoes in 2006 to a company that just announced that we had sold, and hence had an obligation to give, 35 million pairs of shoes. And therefore, um, we originally gave shoes in two, pair, uh, two countries, Argentina and South Africa. And now we recognize that there are children in need all over the world. So we are currently giving shoes in over 70 countries around the world. We originally worked with a very few small community organizations around the world. We now have over 100 different partners. It used to be that we had to go to these organizations and say, please, we think that these shoes are great, and we think we really could add value to the programs that you have, so would you please consider implementing them and integrating them within your programs? We now have programs and partners that are coming to us and saying, can we please have Tom's shoes? We think that we have children who really need them. We think they would be a tremendous value add to the way we work. So. Um, now we're kind of in the catbird seat, and we're able to choose the best partners to work and the countries that really are in the most need. When we first started, we only had one shoe that we were able to offer partners, and that was the Argentine Alpargata. That was a shoe that looked very much like the standard uh, Tom's shoe you would think of to purchase, and it was available in one color, and that was black. We now have what we call the global shoe menu, right? Sounds very, very fancy. Uh, but we have a canvas shoe. We have a winter boot. I'll show you pictures of what all these look like in a minute. We have a sports shoe. We have a school shoe. And the newest addition to the Tom's Giving menu is the wet weather slip-on. And the reason we're so proud of this is because what we have done is respond to what partners have told us and that is they need different shoes to be able to meet the needs of the children in the countries in which they're giving. 
So when we're giving in countries that are cold and we're giving in response to the Syrian refugee crisis, the winter boot is the most appropriate shoe. And when we're giving in tropical climates where a canvas shoe wouldn't have a chance to dry out when it's raining a lot, a wet weather slip-on is going to be most appropriate. And when we're giving in India, where a child has to have a shoe that's been approved by the Ministry of Education in order to be able to wear it to school, then we have to work with a partner to have that particular shoe in order to facilitate a child using that shoe to improve their access to education. So we're tremendously proud that we didn't just stop at having a single canvas shoe when that would have been sufficient. People would have continued to purchase Tom's shoes because they're good looking shoes, right? But we've continued to elevate the way we give. When we started, we didn't have sunglasses. We didn't have optical frames. Now, since 2011, we've launched that uh, product offering. And as a result, we've launched a site giving program. And we now give in 13 different countries. And we've helped restore sight to over 300,000 people around the world. In 2014, we launched Tom's Roasting Company. So we sell coffee, and with every bag of coffee that's sold, we help provide a week's worth of safe water to a community in need around the world. All right, marching along. So how does Tom's shoe giving work? And it's a phenomenal story that involves a huge team of people, both on the shoe giving account side, and also an entire team of people in giving operations and logistics. The whole process starts with people like you, and that means somebody has to make a purchase to kick off the process. We can't do anything until somebody buys a pair of shoes, and that's because of our promise. Our promise is when someone buys a pair of shoes, we will then give a pair to a child in need. So we can't give anything until that purchase has been made because otherwise the customer's purchase would be meaningless. Does that make sense? So the whole process starts when the purchase has been made and then we make that match. Right? We don't do it one by one. That would be a completely inefficient process. So we do them in batches. We allow the partner to customize the order. So these global giving partners, these top tier organizations around the world, they tell us what they need. So they may tell us that they need 50,000 pairs of tiny size twos, and maybe the team looks at them a little askance and thinks that's a little funny, but if they say that's what they need, then the giving team will work with our supply chain team, and that's what they will send, okay? Because we believe they're the experts in what their needs are going to be. We then are going to work with our giving team and we're going to work with our supply chain team to deliver those shoes. We're going to get those shoes manufactured. We deliver only brand new custom made shoes for those children. And our giving partners are going to distribute those shoes to the children in need. Very, very importantly, we pick up the tab. We cover 100% of the cost of manufacturing the shoes and we cover 100% of the cost of ensuring that the shoes are distributed, including something called a last mile contribution. So there's no giving partner that exists in the world that exists solely for the purpose of giving away Tom's shoes, right? That would be silly. So we don't want them to have to incur any costs as a result of participating as a Tom's giving partner. And yet we know there are going to be some costs whether it's a warehousing cost, whether it's um, bottles of water or meals for volunteers, whether it's donkeys that they need to get the shoes those last mile to where the children might be. So in addition to paying the cost from the manufacturing facility to the port, to the warehouse where they're going to store the shoes, we include something called a last mile contribution, and that's a defined amount per pair of shoes that they can use for whatever they think is appropriate. So that could be warehousing facilities, that could be meals, it could be rope and twine, it could be the cost of canoes or donkeys. Whatever they think is appropriate, we don't ask, we don't need receipts, we just send that contribution along with the shoes. 
We review and improve the process. We ask were the shoes comfortable for the children? Some of the early pairs of shoes we sent, turns out the kids, because they didn't wear shoes all the time, the bones in their feet were fairly wider than the shoes were comfortable for. So we worked with our product team to widen the footbed on those shoes. We also asked them, were there any manufacturing problems with the shoes? We had one partner that said, yeah, um, for the most part, the shoes were great, but you sent one box of all right shoes. Turns out that box wasn't gonna be great. So we didn't count that box as ones, right? That's not right for the customers who made that purchase. And then we repeat, because we are making a commitment to sustainable giving for our partners. Now that doesn't mean if a child receives a pair of shoes when they're two years old, they're going to get a pair of shoes every six months until they turn 18. But we try and make a commitment to those partners that they can rely on us as a partner in a sustainable way. So we've learned a lot of lessons since we started in 2006. Some of those critical lessons, we have to build credibility. You don't automatically get credibility when you start out in a new space, and I'll talk a little bit about that. If you want to give well, you have to make an investment. I'll talk about expecting healthy tension. I'll talk about being open, engaging, and listening. And then I'll talk about all the work we've done in innovation. So building credibility with our partners. When we started in 2006, it was Blake and a couple of his buddies and some of the new employees who were going and putting the shoes on kids' feet by themselves. With the number of Tom's shoes that we sell now, that's not sustainable. That's not how we can function. So we've had to prove to our partners, and you can see a handful of their logos here, that we're serious about giving and we're serious about giving well. And we've had to prove this so that they are willing to work with us um, because we didn't automatically have credibility in the space. When Tom started, some of the ideas were fairly naive. We know that these partners were not in the business of distributing shoes. So this team of giving people had to learn and understand what the objectives were of these partners. What were the processes that they had in place? What were some of the hurdles that would be, uh, that had to be overcome? And what were their opportunities? And we had to work really hard at adapting the giving model that we had in place to support some of their realities. One of the things you'll hear most often if you talk to anybody who's on the Tom's Giving team is we don't actually give. Our partners are the ones who do the giving. We just facilitate the process. So what happens is there's a purchase made by a customer, and then you have a Tom's Giving team. And then one of these Tom's 100 plus giving partners will actually do the giving of the Tom's shoe. What we're most proud of is what we believe these Tom's shoes can facilitate. So we think that they can contribute to improved health of children. So in certain areas of the world where there's a geochemical elephantiasis known as podoconiosis, if children wear shoes, it creates a physical barrier where they do not come into contact with the soil and it decreases their risk of developing this devastating and deforming disease. That's a pretty tremendous thing. And all you have to do is get a child to wear a pair of shoes in a consistent manner. So if you provide them with a pair of shoes, it can be a life transforming experience. It's countries like Cameroon and Ethiopia where we have a strong commitment to making shoes available to children. We also know that children who walk around barefoot are at a significantly increased risk of hookworm infection. So if you give them shoes and you also deworm them on a regular basis, you can interrupt the chain of transmission of hookworm. So we know that we can have an impact on health. Shoes can also have an impact on education. In many places in the developing world, children have to travel long distances in order to get to school. So providing them with a pair of shoes can facilitate their ability to get to school. In a lot of places in the developing world, they also need to have a uniform in order to attend school. So by providing them with a pair of shoes that completes the school uniform, you can increase their access to education. We also have partners who provide uh, shoes as an incentive for high achievement in school. 
And programmatic incentives can be a very powerful use of Tom's shoes through our partners programming. The third area in which we see partners using our shoes is a little bit more nebulous, but we still hear a tremendous amount of information from our partners, and that's the area of empowerment and self-esteem. So for a lot of our partners, the children to whom they give shoes very often receive nothing original, nothing brand new of their own. And so when they give children a pair of Tom's shoes, it's very often the only brand new thing they've ever received. So by giving them this brand new thing, as a part of a program, whether it's to incentivize participation in vaccination or deworming or microfinance programs or micronutrient supplementation and saying this is for you and someone wants you to have this very special thing of your very own, they anecdotally report that they see an increase in that child's self-esteem. So we are making an investment in whether or not there is a um, demonstrable increase in self-esteem in children, something that can be very difficult to measure, but nevertheless something we are looking at. So I mentioned that giving well requires an investment, and it's a very significant investment. So uh, what you can see at the top there, that's our giving team. We're not a very serious bunch. Uh, that is the giving accounts team. So that is the group of people that it takes in order to distribute all the shoes around the world uh, the supply chain team, so um, the giving operations, so the people who actually make sure the shoes get where they need to go, social innovation and impact, those of us who work on designing new gives and measuring the impact of the giving that we do, giving communications. In that group, there are three PhDs, individuals with Masters of Public Health, Masters of Public Administration, uh, MBAs, there are Return Peace Corps volunteers, Tom's has made a really significant investment in ensuring that we're not just giving, it's pretty easy to give crap away, and don't misinterpret what I'm saying, that what we're giving is crap. It's easy to give stuff away, right? People will take almost anything. It's really hard to give well, and ensure that when you are giving, you are doing it at the very highest standards, all right? Um, these are two of my favorite pictures of looking at our shoe giving. We've made a commitment that when we give, we're not just going into a capital city and giving it to the easiest children to reach. We're trying to find the children who are most in need of Tom's shoes, who are most in need of sight restoration, who are most in need of safe water. And those are the children we are working with our partners to try and reach, because that's the level of commitment we are making to our customers. So I mentioned that we have a global shoe giving menu. These are the shoe silhouettes that we give. So that's the original Tom's giving shoe, the classic slip on. It's not just available in black, it's available in, I'm is it five or six colors? Five colors. Um, and one of the reasons it's available in so many colors is because we've heard back from partners that not every child in every country wants a black shoe. So for example, uh, in China, black is often associated with death, so um, children don't want to wear a black shoe. So more often in China, our partners want red shoes because that's perceived to be a lucky color. So we have that uh, black shoe available in five different colors. The winter boot, most often given in Eastern Europe. Also on Native American reservations here in the United States. Uh, we have our newest shoe, the wet weather slip-on, that's an EVA material that's appropriate for uh, very wet climates. We have the sports shoe. We're really proud to be able to give that in the United States for a lot of obesity prevention programs. And then we have locally produced shoes, uh, which I'll talk about in a minute. We gave that a different image on our website, so you'd be able to see that there's something different about it. But in fact, if you were looking at our locally produced shoes, one of the things Ummer has worked really hard on is you probably have to pick it up and look at the inside of it to know which factory produced it, because we've really standardized those locally produced shoes so that they are the exact same quality between them. So we have a really healthy tension we have to expect between our sales and our giving. And on one hand, it's great. And on the other hand, sometimes it can be very challenging. 
Wait, hang on, let me, let me back up one second because um, I'm just gonna head off a question that I am anticipating someone is going to ask me at some point. Um, so sometimes people ask if they buy a pair of pink glitter wedge heels, do they uh, give a pair of pink glitter wedge heels to a child in Peru? The answer is no. These are the shoes that we give. That's it, uh, with very few exceptions. We do have some locally manufactured shoes. For example, I man, uh, mentioned that we have a school shoe that gets locally manufactured in India. No matter what you buy, we are going to give what we call our giving shoes, all right? So um, one of the things that is fantastic about the one-for-one -one model is that our customers are directly participating in our giving by your purchases. One of the things that's challenging is there is this constant tension between selling and our ability to give. So we can't give anything until something gets sold. And that necessitates that we have to form very, very strong relationships with our giving partners because we have to wait and say, giving partners, we developed this new sandal and we think it's phenomenal and we think it's going to sell really well but we have to wait until those sales numbers come back until we tell you how many shoes we have to allocate. And sometimes what that means is sales are phenomenal and we're able to give much more than we projected, but that means we have to have partners who have the ability to give even more than they told us they needed so we have to have partners with sort of flex ability. And sometimes that means sales don't meet our projections. And so we're unable to give as much with partners as they told us they needed. And that doesn't put us in a fantastic position, right? And so as a company, we hope we are always able to meet our projections, but that's not always the case. And so that's why we've had to make such an investment in our giving team and in giving well, because we're so dependent on these very strong relationships between Tom's and its giving team and these top tier fantastic partners, because we have to be able to say, can you identify some children who may not need shoes as much as you originally thought? Or can you find more children who need shoes because we sold more this year than we originally thought we might? We're very proud of the fact that we've been open and we try and engage and we listen. Uh, we had a bit of criticism that came a couple years ago, particularly in the blogosphere about the fact that uh, Tom's was giving, but we should have been doing more about creating quality jobs on the back end. And that because we were giving that we may have been having a negative impact on the local economy. And so we've done two things about this. The first is that I started and so yes, I'm single-handedly solving this problem. You're welcome, world. <laughs> um, so I, I've come on and uh, as an epidemiologist, uh, one of my areas of expertise is research study and research design. And I've been working with a team of development economists. And we've been looking at what are the potential impacts on local economies as a result of giving a product that might otherwise have been purchased. And so we're really excited to report that there was a research study supported by Tom's, but in no way influenced by Tom's in terms of the study design that was published in the Journal of Development, Economic, Development Economics um, that was able to show that in fact, there does not appear to be any statistically significant negative effect on a local economy of the donation of shoes. So that number one was very exciting. But number two, um, is that we actually made a commitment by the end of this year and we are on track to meet this commitment. We produce one third of our giving shoes in the regions where we give. And so Ummer has been really instrumental in this initiative. So in addition to the manufacture of shoes in China, and we don't count shoes that have been manufactured and given in China against this one third goal, we manufacture shoes in Argentina, in Haiti, in Ethiopia, in Kenya, and in India. So we're really, really excited that we are able to 
um, report that by the end of the year, we are going to be able to say that we will have produced and we will continue to produce a third of the shoes that we give in the countries where we are uh, giving them. So just so you can see, um, I had the opportunity in October of this year to go visit our Haiti factory. And for those of you who follow Tom's on Instagram or who have a chance to see our catalog, the focus of our spring catalog is our Haiti production. It's really a remarkable facility. Well, we didn't stop at shoes. And so the next step forward was looking to see how else we could use business to improve lives. And so our next product that launched in 2011 was sunglasses followed by optical frames. And so with the purchase of every pair of glasses, we've made a commitment to help restore sight for one person. And it became more complex because we didn't just want to give away a pair of glasses because we recognize the transformative power of helping to restore sight. So with every pair of glasses that's sold, we help restore sight through a sustainable eye care model. And that means through an ophthalmologist or an optometrist, we either will give a pair of prescription glasses, so correction of refractive error, or a sight-saving surgery. So that's either a cataract surgery or typically it will be a surgery for trachoma. Or we provide medical treatment. The reason this is so critical is because around the world, 285 million people are blind or visually impaired. 80% of that can be prevented or cured. 90% of that burden falls in the developing world. So how does it work? Well, the majority of sight restoring services are performed in hospitals. And for the most part, that's being performed in tertiary eye hospitals, right? You need eye service, you're going to go to the best place where that can happen, and that's where the ophthalmologists are. In the developing world, ophthalmologists practice in eye hospitals. There may also be some rural clinics, that's where you could go to get a pair of glasses or maybe medical treatment. But the people who are blind, typically, or visually impaired as a result of needing glasses, are typically going to be out in the very rural areas. So Tom's support goes to school screenings and eye camps to identify the individuals who are in need of sight restoration. And that's where we're able to have uh, the greatest impact because that's where we can really improve the access to care. As I mentioned in 2014, we really branched out because we entered into the consumable space with Tom's Roasting Company. So with every bag of coffee that's purchased, Tom's helps to provide a week of clean water to a person in need. The WHO has uh, defined that a person needs 20 liters of water per day to meet their basic needs. So with every bag of coffee that's purchased, we provide 140 liters of water. So just to sort of set the stage in terms of the need, uh, 1.8 billion people lack access to safe drinking water. Two and a half billion don't have adequate sanitation. 40 billion hours are spent collecting water uh, in Africa alone. That's a tremendous amount of time, a burden borne mostly by young girls and women. And that's time that's not being spent in school, so we're starting to see a disparity in education. So we work with our giving partner, Water for People, and what they do, again, a sustainable model, they go into communities and they provide long-term solutions. So intending to provide continuous service to impact the community for generations. They, they monitor the area, they design a system, and they try and find a sustainable solution. They identify a person who's going to essentially be the water owner or the water monitor. Okay? They train that person to look at the functioning of the water system. They train that person to fix the water system should anything go wrong. And they ensure that if they're going to build a water system in a community, that there are going to be replacement parts available in the country so that there isn't going to be a chance that the water system will not be functioning six months, one year, or five years later. So just so you can see, these are the countries in which we give. Um, so shoe giving only are the countries that are just solid blue. 
the horizontal stripes are countries where we only give sight. The dotted blue is shoe and sight. Uh, countries where we have just dark blue is shoe and water. Dark dotted is shoe, sight, and water. That's just Guatemala. It's the only country where we have overlap of all three. And then the little sewing machines are factory locations. So you guys ready for the big reveal? So our newest one for one, launching on February 26th, we are launching a bag line. So that's the product side. But really the very exciting thing is that Tom's is entering into the maternal and child health space. And so with every bag that's purchased, Tom's is going to help provide a safe birth for a mother and baby in need. And as we are trying to broaden our product offering, we're really looking at deepening our impact offering. So we looked to launch this give only in countries where we had at least two other gives and countries where we had local manufacturing. So this is a give that'll be launching in Haiti, in Ethiopia, in India, and Bangladesh. And in order to bring on this give, we looked at countries that had very high rates of maternal and neonatal mortality and that had very high rates of home birth because we really wanted to ensure that our customers' purchases had the opportunity to have maximal impact on a tremendous global need. So what is the need for safer births? Well, last year, 40 million women gave birth without a trained birth attendant. So here in the United States and in most developing countries, women give birth, usually in hospital settings, very often attended by a doctor or a midwife, someone who has specialized skills at understanding how to ensure a baby comes into the world with minimal complications. And it happens in an area where there's minimal risk of infection occurring, but that's not the situation in most developing countries. So because they're coming into the world, because birth is happening in unclean birth conditions, infection is a leading cause of death in both mothers and newborns worldwide. And over half a million mothers and babies can be saved each year with the provision of clean birth conditions. So what we are going to do with every bag that's purchased, we're going to work with our giving partners in these four countries to provide both training for community health workers and these are women who are going to be providing prenatal health checkups. They're going to be providing um, information about how to bring a baby into the world safe and healthy. And they're also going to be there at the moment of delivery and able to call for help should anything go wrong and facilitate that transfer to uh, someone else who has additional training should it, the situation necessitate. We're also going to be providing safe birth materials for the time of delivery that are necessary to help prevent infection. And what will the impact be? Ideally, mothers and babies will be saved. So mothers are 80% less likely to develop an infection and almost half of all newborn deaths can be prevented. All of this made possible with the purchase of a Tom's bag. So I think uh, we have a couple minutes left to answer questions. So thank you guys very much.